Looks like we have an uninvited guest. Is that so? A human. A woman. I'm afraid I should ask the uninvited one to leave. That is what you want. Actually, I happen to be acquainted with that woman. A storm is approaching. Welcome back everyone to Mission 4, The Uninvited One. As you can see from the previous cutscene, Arkham is very, very, very disturbed by a woman being in his tower. And I would be disturbed too if a woman was in my tower, because I prefer my women to be out and around my tower. Sexual innu innuendos ahoy. For today we'll be playing as the Trickster style, because I feel like it. I was going to do Swordmaster though, as a celebration to picking up Cerberus, but I do not like Cerberus and it is shit weapon, so we will do that in the next weapon coming up. Of course there'll be more weapons coming up. And so for today you've seen I've, I actually have built up a quite a fair few amount of points. And for that we'll be buying some abilities like Air Hike. And you know why we're buying Air Hike? Because it runs with Nike. So just do it. Alternatively we'll also be buying Drive. We'll show what Drive does at a later date. But for that we'll just start the mission shall we? Welcome to the Tower of Temenegru. Gark- uh, Garkic? Gothic architecture ahoy. Flaming doors, not included. A smirking devil statue. And a subtle hint to where we need to go. To the right of the entrance you'll find a statue to pick up any items that you may have forgotten about earlier. A massive statue decorates the centre of the centre of the tower. The skeletal angels appear to be smirking. How strange. Anyway, this is a demonstration of the abilities. That was Air Hike, and this is Drive. No, Dante does not get in a car, but sends a shockwave of furious death. Beautiful, good work, Dante. Okay, so you just make your way up here. Go clockwise, then counterclockwise, and you'll make your way to the door. No, no, Dante, come on. No, no. Come on, fuck. No. Shit, fuck. There we go. Anyway, you might remember in the last episode of the LP, we took on the mighty beef, beast of Greek mythology, Cerberus, the three-headed hound of hell. And uh, he was quite a furious challenge, also the place where most people give up on the Devil May Cry 3 game. You know why? Because he's an asshole, that's why, and his weapon is shit. Regardless of this, he has been defeated and Dante enters the tower to find his brother Virgil at the top. But how will Dante get to the top of this miraculously crazy... Ridiculous tower that sprung out of the earth like nothing before. Hell if I know, but he's gonna find a way, like it or not. Even if there is no actual stairway to the top of the tower for some reason, but we'll find more about that in a little bit. And it's our good old friends, the Vagina Eyes for today. How fantastic, I like the Vagina Eyes. How you doing? You're not gonna impale me with more ridiculous bullets, are you? I think you are. Approaching these gr this group of enemies is sudden, well, you are likely to get your ass pierced by bullets. That is all I can say about it. Do not approach them immediately like I do. Right here, as you can see, it hurts a lot. Well, actually, no, it doesn't hurt that much. It only takes off one notch off your health bar. But try and take it out as quickly as possible. Get your shotgun out because it's a close-up range blast from the shotgun will interrupt their casting. Yes, when they generate their bullets, it is a casting animation for which you can interrupt with a rightly dealt, oh, a rightly dealt amount of damage. You can also find a couple of them up here, just be sure to get rid of them, otherwise they will catch you unawares. And nobody likes being caught unawares by sharp objects. Nothing unusual here, just jump over their lunge attacks and that's pretty much all they've got to them. Lust monsters really aren't anything special, we'll be seeing lots of harder enemies in the near future. Ugh. No, jump! There we go. You think you can sneak up with your ass on Dante, motherfucker? I don't think you can! BAM! Fucking love the, str the stinger move. I use it more than anything else, probably. I didn't even have to see you to kill your fool ass. Motherfuckers. 
As you can see, for some reason, this one respawns. I'm not entirely sure why, but it does anyway. Probably to keep some sort of persistent challenge. But he cannot handle Dante's mighty shockwave of terror. Of course not. <laughs> what a fool. See, as you can see, one shot from the shotgun just totally knocks him off balance. Easy enough. And you might have noticed an item in the room just at the center, but we cannot get it at, for the time being. So we will come back for that at a later point, next chapter more specifically. Spoilers! Oh, those terrible, terrible spoilers. And so you got some more statues in here, knock them all off the platform because we will be using it as our elevator. I'm not entirely sure if they weigh the elevator down, I've not actually tried, I just thought I should get them off anyway and they give money. Why the fuck not? Slap at the panel on the wall until you get all the lights on, and then fantastic. Elevator powers up, jump on it to make it activate. Do I really need to instruct you of this? No, I really don't. I'm oversimplifying things. Taking you for idiots. <laughs> I can't imagine why, well, what it's like to not have blue badger intellect. Not at all. And so we are introduced to a new monster of the game already. For one I have forgotten the name of, so we will be calling them the Sand Spitters. The Sand Spitters of Dusty Vaginas. Oh, so vulgar today, Badger, but today the sand is not in our vagina. Where is the sand, you ask? Well, it's better that you don't ask. Never ask a Badger where he puts his sand. They're fairly simple. They're pretty much like the, um, the demons of pride, except that they spit sand at you. They generally like to catch you in small corridors so that you can't escape their furious sand spits. Just like that. And I would advise not fighting them in the corridor if you can help it. BAM! S! Double S! Triple Stylish! Motherfucker down! It's always crazy to get that sort of ranking. I love it. it makes me feel so professional. There's something strangely gratifying about the style gauge. It makes you want to keep it up. Not that I can't keep it up, that is. My style gauge. Of course. Showtime, motherfuckers. I don't know why, I just love it. It's a great mechanic, even though it is a little bit arcadey. And down you go, motherfucker. Bam! And that's this section of the level complete. And also, up here... You may backflip over the bar, that's not what you really need to be doing. Instead, you need to be stop fucking around, Dante, and you need to get your stupid bitch ass up there. There we go. Up here would normally be a blue fragment, but in a previous recording I at that failed, I picked it up and now it's not there anymore. Blue orb fragment is there. It would complete your orb fragment, uh, fragment selection to this point and gain you a new notch of health. Yes, the yellow door is where we need to go, cutscene. Thank you for the hint. We can't actually do anything with that panel for now, so we'll just continue on through the yellow door. For your information, you may use Stinger at this point to cross the gaps where... Well, also, using Trickster, the special move for Trickster that allows you to dash, would also allow you to dash over this portion. That is exactly what you need to do, because these gaps in the platforms... Some people might go, oh shit, I can't really do anything about that. So, just Stinger your way over there, hold R1 for triangle, done. Steal thy soul! The future knows no bounds for those who definitely march forth to meet it. I wonder what that could mean. It couldn't mean anything, really. Oh, this is kind of dangerous. This can... Could this... Ah, oh, fuck! Never mind, let's continue on. And as you see, you are put... Well, put into a... What do you call it? An arena, I suppose? Every le level's a fucking arena in this game. It's not like we're forced to do much else other than uh, slay demons. Jump, bam! Motherfuckers. That's true, actually. Is it really right to call any area in this game where with where normal monsters are included rather than a boss, an arena of any sort? It's just a flashy way of taking you to a new different environment to fight in, even though it doesn't really matter where you fight them except for how big the room is and are there any obstacles in your path. Well, I'm sure as fuck not able to tell you. I can't have game philosophy in the most rudimentary of designs and also the most useless of designs as you can see there are a lot of exploding monsters here i think they infinitely respawn until all the monsters are taken out or at least the majority of them are i cannot guarantee this or verify it for the special edition or the normal edition 
So you'll just have to deal with it for yourself. But they seem to keep coming back every time I shoot them. Useful and not useful, considering how constrained the room is. Sloths can survive most explosions, for those wondering. Lust monsters and the monsters of pride... No, pride monsters cannot survive them. The demons of lust can. Oh man, that was a fucking jewel off right there. He thought he could pounce on me, but no, he got a shockwave in the face. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. Ah. Man, what's wrong with me today? Smash! And so we continue on, deftly, into the double red doors of hell. Maybe not hell. And I walk over here. Don't know where... What? No, no, not over here, Dante. Dante, other door. Other door. No, no. There we go. Good job. And now we will find the one actual good use for Cerberus in this entire game. This mini-boss. You know why? Because he has one certain move that allows you to move along his back and slash down on it. Just rotary... In a rotary motion, it's like you're crushing him in a gear work. Just keep on ro rotating with the forward... How do I put this? How, how do you explain this move? Basically, you have this move where you act in a rotary motion, as I should d display somewhere along here. Like that, if you can see it through all these seizure lights. That spinning move is fantastic for just gently moving down his back and taking off mass portions of his health. He's really hard to consider to be a mini-boss, but for some reason his behaviour in this special edition is a little different from the original mode. In the original mode, you could slap his ass up no problem, and he ri I usually kill him before he actually has a chance to send off his purple orbs. Which, uh, literally, he's that easy. Before he can do any of his special attacks, you could probably kill him. But in this mode, he just goes absolutely fucking batshit crazy. He uses all of his attacks and just does not give a shit. And actually gives me a little bit of a problem. I don't need to use any health items or anything, but he's just really being a fucking annoyance. Moving faster than usual as well. Normally I've killed him by now. And normally he doesn't rotate quite so much. Maybe they upgraded his difficulty because everyone considered him free money. I wish I got that feeling whenever I looked at monsters. Ah, oh, damn it, too soon. Regardless of this, you can see that the battle is fairly rudimentary. Is rudimentary the word I want to be using? I'm not entirely sure why am I using it. Regardless, it's fairly simple. Observe him as he comes out the uh, one of the holes, the various several holes in the room. Jump on his back, slash his ass up. Really, do I need to tell you anything more than that? He's not a hard mini-boss. He requires no thought, no effort, and... Well, basically, I don't even know what that flash is. It doesn't hurt me. Also, before he comes out of the uh, out of the holes, you okay? He's not actually supposed to be able to electrocute you while you're on his back. That's bizarre. And also, just so you know, you can shoot him before he comes out of the hole. If you hold your target button, you'll be able to see which hole that he is coming out of. And if you're in front of the hole, spam your abony and ivory buttons to well, concede damage. I don't know why I have such a problem with this motherfucker today. It's ridiculous. So the only problem with him today is that he's just taking his fucking time. And it's really difficult to stay on his back for some reason. Normally it's easy as shit for me. But as you can see, his Cerberus takes off mass chunks of his health. Even though it's not really a particularly strong weapon, it can do a fair bit to him, really. Slash, 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 slash. Slash, 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 slash. There's really nothing to him. The only troublesome point is when you try to jump onto his back, his um, little arms will get in the way. So, so much for the giant flying electric tapeworm. I don't know who the fuck was on some sort of medication when they were making this boss. They could have put a little bit more effort into it. Maybe some game developer came back from the doctors and he's like, You have tapeworms, lol. 
Yes, I said lol. And down he goes. Nightmares about tapeworms, ahoy. Style level up. We have level trickster to level two, and now we can dash in the sky. Beautiful. It's great for evading enemy attacks. I was actually trying to figure out how you do it. I thought you were supposed to do it off a wall. It's been a while since I've used the trickster technique. But no, I figure out eventually that you can, it's just a dash in the sky. You can't do it after jumping off walls. There you go. Easy enough. But I was too slow. I didn't pick up. Ah. Oh. oh, well. And in this room is the item that we need for the plate at the top of the tower. Dante is startled that violence does not work on this door. There's no need to use violence, devil boy. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Better listen to what I have to say, lad. This tower here is very sturdy. You see? Your tricks will do no good. No good! Zip it! Or I'll pierce that big nose. That could be a problem. Just hear me out. You've got nothing to lose, right? My name is Jester. And I know a thing or two about this place. That thing there is a power generator for this entire sector. In order to open the door, you need to apply a little something to it first. Do you know what that is, kid? Or is that too difficult for you? <laughs> Get to the point, or do you want to keep on dancing? Actually, I prefer a sword to be my partner. May I have this dance, my lady? <laughs> That is what the something is! Remember that, kid? Write it down on your hand if you don't trust your head! <laughs> I see. Thanks. <laughs> you still piss me off, though. And so that was the maniacal jester, and we'll be seeing more of him in the near future. Beautiful, it's mission clear and time for another rank. B. 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 S. That is BS. B. Oh, that was a ridiculous rank. I was hoping it would at least be an A. But that was it for Devil May Cry 3. Part 2. No, part 3. What am I talking about? Good night, everyone. See you next time.